Welcome to another episode of the Corner Talk. This is the initial, this is the first one. This is the post-fight interview. Um, I'm, I'm blessed to sit next to this gentleman, um, Cam, hell of a fighter, man, outstanding gentleman. I have the privilege to talk to him off the camera. And, and this man ha has a lot to offer. Um, there's a lot of words I feel synonymous with him, warrior, fighter, uh, gentleman. Um, I, I think that's something that's lost in our fault. But without further ado, I'm gonna allow this man Introduce himself. Welcome to Corner Talk, Talks. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, everybody know me. I'm Cameron Fox. You know, um, I grew up on the north side of Columbus. Um, before we even start this interview, you know, I want to uh, give God thanks for everything. And, you know, um, I don't go against no one's religion, but, you know, if you are somebody out there who believe in God and Jesus, as much as we preach on uh, showing our kids an Easter bunny or a Santa Claus that, that we know is fake and we don't believe in, we can show our kids who God is. But other than that, um, back back on the boxing thing. But uh, but yeah, um, I'm Cam Fox. Like I said, I grew up on the north side of Columbus. Um, I, I I don't have any amateur or pro fighting experience. Um, I, honestly, I I, I kind of grew up fighting. To be honest with you, you know, I was I was a young little dude. I was I was skinny. I was I was little. So you know, a lot of the times, a lot of cats thought they could get one over. But you know, as Hey, that's, that's just what it was for me when I was growing up. I had to scrap a lot. So I learned my ways in and out through, you know, fighting in the streets and stuff. So, but, you know, I'm here to give positive vibes and stuff. And, you know, I just want every, fi every fighter to feel like they're a good fighter. Like, I don't feel like no one's a shitty fighter. I feel like every fighter just got something they need to learn. And it's just all based on your learning and how fast you grow. Let me touch on something that you just alluded to, if you don't mind. Um, you said you have no experience. I mean, you, you, you really, really come across as someone that's actually fought before, uh, maybe trained before. Um, as you know, as, as you've learned, and I'm sure you're aware of, um, you got a lot of attention. Yeah. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people, yeah, I, I, I hear a lot of people who say, you know, they think I got experience or whatnot, but to be honest with you, I don't. Uh, I had, maybe when I was in high school, I had maybe five months, six months experience at Buster Douglas Boxing Gym, but that was just training, you know, and I haven't did that since then. And to be honest with you, I haven't even fought since about, when I, at least a couple years after I got out of high school, like around 2021, and I'm 31 now. So, you know, it, it I, I, I really just, I, I, had, I watch YouTube videos and I, and I take my training very, very, very serious. I don't, I don't joke because I feel like in the ring, that's, that's a life or death situation anybody can get hit with something that could be fatal, so I'm not I'm not going to play with my trainer or play with my opponent, you know what I mean? Let me, let me touch on something, because I know something that's near and dear to your heart. One of the things, is, and as, again, you said it, and I'm just going to follow up. Um, you're very passionate about your religion. You're very passionate about your relationship with Jesus Christ. If, give me a, give us a small sample of why, what impact did he have in your life that made you? Man, one, um, I almost died in a car crash. I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna get into elaborate stories of it, but I'm just gonna give y'all just a few pointers. You know, I almost died in a car crash. Could have did nine years in prison. Um, I was back then. I was a wild head, try, trying different kinds of drugs and stuff that was bad for me. And I was just, I just went in there mentally, man. And you know, once I started reading that word, you know, like I said, everybody got their own walk of life. But, you know, once I started reading that word and seeing the truth, I started realizing how much wrong I was really doing. And that's not going to say that I changed my life all the way around and I'm a perfect God because I'm not. I sin every day. But I do see the truth now, and you know, what, what that word gives me. And that's why I put my faith in the God now. Because I mean, I, I, I never really believed in God like that. I'm going to just keep it 100 with you. I, I was living my life wild, like just doing whatever. But... Life ain't about that. It ain't about living wild, man, because it's consequences behind that. I commend you. When you I commend him. I commend you. I say it to you privately, and I now say it to you publicly. I commend you for being on your journey, being on your path. And I, I admire the fact that you say you allow everyone to respect all different walks of life. Yeah. I think that's huge, particularly in today's day and era, day's day and era, day's day and time. There's a lot of different walks, but faith is faith, right? Yes, it is. Um, yes, so it is. I, you alluded to... Uh, being a wild child and being out in the world, you know, it is what it is. You've been in the street. I know I just totally can relate to that. This movement, 
it's, it, it's initially started to get the street element somewhere safe, controlled, and you know, somewhere fair. Um, how do you feel about this movement? Do you feel it's something that plays strong on the community? Do you feel it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not? I mean, how do you feel about it? I feel, I feel this event definitely plays a strong role in the community because, you know, I, um, I feel like it's based upon um, the type of people that are coming out to these events. I'm going to be honest because it's a very positive event. And, you know, I feel like we give all very positive vibes. And I feel like the more people come and realize, if you come in to realize that this is about really like like i'm just being honest like f all the bets on the size with the fighters and the money and all the other stuff mm -hmm. if, if we looking at putting out an image for the kids and the people mm -hmm. this is this is where it's at man like you know we but like I, i'm not gonna lie i was kind of embarrassed to hear about my city from a couple of people i ain't gonna put no names on it but like we used to be we used to be a city known for fighters like, like back then, like everybody was a hitter. And I heard a few people say like, Columbus is trash, like they ain't got no fighters and everybody's shooters. Everybody just want to shoot. And I feel like that's whack, man. Like we was known for fighters. And like, and, like I want to bring that back. Like I want to bring the real hitters back. Like like all, all that gunplay, you, you you just really scary for real. Like that's, that's just, we got we to gotta do better than that. That's just how I feel. I, I totally concur with this gentleman. Um, uh, growing up, you was respected for your hands. If you was known to have your hands, you was respected for your hands. You know, I know times has passed. I don't be stuck in our era. Yeah, right, right. Um, right. About where people respect the shooter, and that's fine. But your guns is to protect your life and your family's life. Exactly. These should be used as self disputes, and I'm glad this young man alluded to that. Um, so you have no training. No. You have you you have taught yourself pretty much for the most part. You self taught. Well, be honest with you, you know, um, I do have to get a shout from one person. You know, um, I'm at this shout to my dude Bo uh, Tyson because I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, when uh, when I first started this, like eight nine months ten months ago, um, I was going around at different gyms and when no coach gave me a time and day. I'm gonna be honest, like every time I try to get with a coach, they either had something to do or they was training the fighters they wanted to fight and. I ain't talked to this man in forever. And I called him and it was automatic. I got you, I'm gonna help you get, get back together. And we was in the middle of an alley in the hood next to a garbage can with, 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 with pad mitts on, getting it in and flip flops and, and regular shoes. And we, we was both just dudes just trying to make it out. So it was just like, I, 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 that's, that's, that's where it all started at, for real, to be honest with you. And now it's leading to this, you know? So. Shout out to your comrade, Paul Tyson, for helping this young man get started. Yeah, Big facts. up to you, sir, for, for doing that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to ask you something. You said you grew up fighting in the street. Um, you know, and I hope I'm not getting too personal. Was, was no, that no. some sort of gang affiliation? Absolutely just... not. I was never. I was never gang affiliated. I was never. I was never with. Um, I was never with any gang. I'm not gonna lie. I had a couple of cats that you know. I had some friends that was from the hood, and you know, I had my time in my life where I felt like I was somebody. I was, you know, a few of my friends was blood, so. You know, I felt like I was a blood at time, but that was just being young and, yes. you know, just not knowing your way in life, yes. you know, not having a positive role model to show you the right way. So you're trying to be a part of something because you're not used to being a part of something, you know what I mean? But then I just grew, you know, it's, it's, I didn't want to be a part of that, you know what I mean? But a lot of guys have respected me because, you know, I started not won the game bang it was just more like I'm, I'm cam i'm the fighter you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. i ain't gonna gang bang you know i'm jokey jokey i'm laughy laughy that's true but we're gonna hit that's if true. you want to play you know that's what true. i'm saying that's <laughs> but true. that's where the fight came i wasn't no drug dealer none of that stuff shout out to this man you know from blood to christ that's that's huge from blood to christ you know what i mean and i i, I admire what you said um you didn't talk down on affiliations or your neighborhood right. and that's huge yeah. and, I, and I think people need to need to hear that more and I want them to pay attention to what he said although he said he transitioned away he didn't talk down upon and that that's huge exactly. um, let me ask you something now as you fight you've been in a couple of fights and you had a great performance um you have a favorite punch do I got a, a favorite punch, punch? Or a punch that you feel is your strength Watch out for that right hand, Watch buddy. Watch out for that right hand, baby. Nah, I ain't gonna lie, buddy. That, 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 that right hand, buddy, is some serious boy, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you know, I, I try to, I, I ain't gonna get too elaborate on it, but you know, I got my little secret. But those that no no, that, 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 that's that no no. Don't run into that right, buddy. Yeah, you heard that. <laughs> those that no no. Let me ask you something, man. We gonna stay on the boxing lane a little bit, man. Yeah. You just had a, he a, a hell of a fight, hell of a performance yesterday with, with these. Right. And we're gonna get into that. But let me ask you something right now, right now, for the public, for the league. 
Is there any smoke that you don't want? No. I'm, I'm not, sorry, I'm sir. Not, I'm sorry. I don't think he heard you. I, no, there's there is no smoke that I'm ducking. Um, I'm not I'm not afraid to get knocked out. I go in that ring all the time, knowing there is a chance that I could possibly get knocked out. I never doubt any of my opponents. Not one person that I fought, mm -hmm. I ever had the intention of going in like, you know, hey, this nigga gonna be trash, and I'm about to straight dog walk him. I had confidence, but I also know there could be a possibility of getting knocked out. I didn't been there. I didn't. I done been slept on my feet. I, I, I done been in sparring matches where I done got my ass beat. So like, like I don't walk in there with no cocky intentions. Like this is gonna be just a dust walk. But I'm gonna I'm go in there with the intentions. Like I'm not gonna play with you. You know, I find it really, really amazing and a testament to you and, and, and your path that you had, you definitely had me fooled. I was under assumption that there was a significant amount of training from your stance, from your balance, you know, from your headiness, from, from you being a, a, a ring general, generalship. But I do want to go back to this fight with Queez. Yeah. You know, there was a bit of controversy. Yeah. You know, I initially waved it off and um, he got back on his feet. And I asked you, I said, do you still want to let him get these rounds in? Right. And you was more than willing. Shout out to you for being that competitor. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You could have took your victory and scurried off. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. you allowed him to come back and, and, and redeem himself. Right. Walk me through that fight. What was your mindset going in? I'm going to be honest, I did not expect for Queese to come out like that. Shout, I out, was, to I, shout, out, shout out to Queese too, man. Good, very good dude, very good heart. I, I love that dude. That's, that's a good dude right there. But uh, I did not expect for Keese to come out like that. I was expecting for Keese to come out like how he did in his last fight. The last fight I seen, he was a whole bunch of jabs. He knocked homie on his ass in the second round. He gut punched him. He was doing all types of shit, but it was like I didn't see that Queese that night. I, it, was like, it was like when he came out. It was like, I seen that look in his eyes. It was kind of like, a little like, mm, I don't know. And when I smelt that, it was like, I had to jump on that. You know what I'm saying? It was like, it was like I smelt the blood in the air. And, I, and you know, that's just the way the game go. And that's how it went. And honestly, that's how it went with me and June's fight. You know what I'm saying? When, when, when I, I, I give, and shout out to June too. All right? I'm going to be real about it, bro. When I, when I fought June, when I came in that uh, ring, I, I, my head went in there and he smelt that blood and he attacked it. And that's what you're supposed to do. This is a, this is a, this is a, this is a, a gruddy sport, man. You, 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 you can't go in that ring. With, with no lazy intentions or looking like you got scared intentions in your eyes, you got to go in there looking like you ready to eat. Hey, this man say, says it. He's a competitor, and, and and I love the fact that you never take it personal out the ring. No. You compete, no. and 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 it's a lot of respect he gives to his opponents by competing aggressively, hard, and with intention pulls. And um, <laughs> but that that that's huge, and and I admire that. But. After the, after the second round, I seen you kind of uh, settle in a little bit. What was you talked to your corner? What, did you change your strategy, or that was the initial strategy? Because the first round, you, you jumped on. Yeah, you jumped on. Yeah, you know what I mean. So the second round, of course. You, you, the second <laughs> round, you, you seemed like your strategy changed a little bit. So I don't know if that was your initial strategy, or was that a, a, a on the fly adjustment? I'm gonna be honest. I go all of, I go all of based off my opponent and where mm -hmm. where, where you want where you want to mm -hmm. take it to. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, that's that's not the only thing in my arsenal. Like like, I was waiting to use some other shit in my arsenal, but it was like I know where to keep it at if I need to I'm use sure. it. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Because you know I'm not I'm not a one set I'm not a one set type of guy. I might got trouble using my feet or something, but you know mm -hmm. you can always count on it. I got something under my sleeve that I I'm gonna use. You. you know what I mean? I like sure. it's gonna be it's gonna be something that I'm coming. You know? I mean, it was a huge fight, and I myself, you know, uh, in in the group, shots fired, Facebook group multiple groups, make sure you join. If you're not part of it, you're missing out. Um, and I said, you know, I said to you, there's a lot of attention on this fight. Yeah. A lot, a lot of, cause you would not have developed a following. Yeah. You developed a fan base. Um, you, you, you've, you, you've shown that you're capable and quite possibly in line for the championship. Is that something that you got your line or your goal set on? Hey, <laughs> I had everybody asking me that, man. I'm not gonna lie. Like it was mad people at the event, like, bro, you gonna go for the championship? And I, I'm, I'm gonna just put it like this, man. I'm a very humble dude. And you know, I let everybody get their little shot to do whatever they want to do. But I'm not I'm not gonna let that one out again. I'm not gonna tell y'all when I'm coming for that belt. But just know I will be coming for that motherfucker though, for sure. Hey, yeah, I heard that gentleman. The yeah. ones that's walking around with that belt around your waist. Yeah. I I'll say it for him. Because I know what he said. Don't get quite comfortable yet. <laughs> that belt's not home yet. I think, I think Mr. Fox said that belt belongs to him. 
Yeah. Not the fuss uh, like I said, like I said, I'm 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 gonna sit back, everybody do their little thing, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm a very humble guy, everybody get their little they little fight on like I said, I'm 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 like I'm I'm the lion in the grass looking at the whole herd in the in the in the African village, yes, you know what I'm saying? Yes, like I, I see all the deer running and mm -hmm. as soon as I see that one just running, I'm yes, I'm hopping off that grass and I'm biting yes, on it. So like I said, everybody the herd keep going, but that lion gonna jump out on it one day. So you hear this goal <laughs> oriented gentleman. You hear him. Yeah, he, he, I, I, I love his energy. He's a great, great guy. And, and I really, I need to say that more, VA that more. People see us as the pugilists or the boxes. And whatever you think about that league, of this league or that league is your opinion. You know, we've developed something to develop lane. This gentleman got to fight. He got to learn fans. He got a spot to, to show his testimony for his faith, his religion. He shows a lot. Um, before I let you go, I'm going to ask you something. We seen a girl fight, right? which was pretty good. How do you feel about girls participating in this league? Um, I think it's too, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I think the females get a little bit more emotional than what the dudes do. I'm gonna be honest, but I, I love it though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they get in there and they get, they get, they get to scrap and they do their thing, you know, but I really feel like it's, it's a great thing for the females to do. I'm not gonna lie because keep it real, if I'm gonna be honest, I, you hear more about girls toting guns more than the dudes nowadays. I'm just gonna be honest with it. Like a lot of females is packing pistols. So yeah, get them females in here too. We don't need females out here bodying dudes and bodying females. Get them in here, squash that beef in the ring, just like how the dudes do. So yeah, get them in here. That's true. Well, um, one more one more thing is there is there a fighter that you emulate or a fighter? You said you know you watch YouTube and you learn. Mm -hmm. you learn. Is there a fighter, a particular fighter that? That's your favorite, or maybe there's one that you feel like I still a move here, here, there from. I'm not gonna tell all that too, no. but I'm gonna tell. But look, 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 I'm gonna tell you one thing. I'm gonna tell you one fight. I'm gonna tell you one fight because there's a few fighters, but I don't like telling my fighters because I really imitate their image and lightweight when I do train. But I'm yeah. gonna tell you one person that I get my mm -hmm. my hard body stance from, and that's Jamel Charlo. That's I get he, he Jamel Charlo. I like the way he fight. He come in. He's aggressive. He don't care how fast you is. He don't care all that wild hitting you doing. Cause once he connect with you and once he hit you with one, it's gonna hit you. If you watch any Jamel Charles fight, even when those dudes come in and try to hit him in the stomach, his body is so solid to the point like he don't even care about none of that. And that's how I treat my conditioning. Yes. When I condition and when I train, I'm not playing. Like I'm training for five to six hours at a time. Like I'm not, I'm not doing no 20 minutes out of gym and then going home. And, yeah, nah, man. I'm, I'm I'm out there running. I'm out here lifting weights. I'm I'm doing the whole nine. And like I said again, when you get in that ring, you'll be a salty dude that taking your training lightly. And you get in there with a dude who been training and he whoop on you. It's gonna be the last thing you regret. Uh, I I like that you touched on that. Um, this is something I've been really pushing in the league. Conditioning is key. Get your miles in. Get your jump rope in. You got to get your wind up. Yep. How do you feel? When you see some of the gentlemen, talented gentlemen in this league, maybe gas out a little bit. It's normal because I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of dudes are not gassing out because they don't have win. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys is gassing out because they're nervous. Indeed. A lot of guys Indeed. is gassing out because their anxiety in the beginning of the fight. When they when they in the beginning of that first round, their blood is rushing so much to the point when they come out, they ah, ah. Mm -hmm. and so you losing more wind and your adrenaline and your anxiety than you is of actually throwing your punches. And that's why by the end of your first round, you like oh shit like like and, it, and, it, and it's like that though you know what i'm saying so it's not saying that the dudes ain't got win i feel like we and I, i'll be honest i haven't seen one fighter who didn't and i don't care how good they was in this event that didn't gas out by the time of that end of that second round leading into that third round mm -hmm. it's, it's it's all about your, your your mind your mentality and how you going to control that win right that he's something he touched on was really great the adrenaline and i say the guys all the time the adrenaline um the nerves. We always, people always say, calm down, calm down, breathe, breathe. There's a reason to that. Um, let me ask you something. I, I, if you don't mind, uh, give me your opinion on some of the other fights on your card. One of the best cards that we've had so far, your card that, that we just had last Sunday, you, uh, obviously you put on a hell of a performance. Um, as you can see by the crowd's reaction, and I seen you doing your tour outside the ring after the fight was over, a lot of handshakes, a lot of pats on the back. Yeah. Amazing job. How do you feel about the, uh, the heavyweight fight? We had the big John Murphy nail fight. How'd you feel about that? Uh, I feel like uh, I feel like that was a that was a good fight. I feel like um, just knowing 
uh, Josh personally, mm -hmm. I feel like Josh could have did way better than that. He he did pull it off. I do feel like Josh won. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. I do feel like Josh won, and that's not to take away from Patterson either because he was Honestly. he was giving Josh some some nice little ones. He was coming in with a nah nah nah, and you know, but mm -hmm. Josh was still coming in working that jab. But knowing Josh and seeing him spar before, yes. I, I know he could have yes. he could have yes. he could have yes. he could have yes. performed. Way better though, but still shout out to Josh and uh, Neil Patterson. That was a hell of a fight for uh, heavyweights. And to be honest, I get I commend them most for real. Be honest with you, because they had more win than some of the guys my size, and they went what five rounds? They went five. They went five. Hey, they went five. That's all to do. Uh, uh, we just talked about the big boy heavyweight fight, and, it, and I really want to get your opinion on the middleweight championship fight. Obviously, we introduced belts to the league, and we had our first middleweight championship fight. If you, if you don't mind, got a great box of mine. Give me some insight on the, or your, at least your views of the trade and Armani middleweight championship fight. Uh, I feel like that was a that was a, a, a heck of a fight. Shout out to Trey and uh, Armani. Um, I felt like uh, I felt like when uh, I felt like Trey when he was about to come in, I felt like uh, Trey's energy started being down a little bit. You know, his energy wasn't the same. Like like it, it was it was a little hype, but it wasn't like it was before. And I felt like um, was it nervous? Do you think it was nervous? Nervous, I, maybe he. I may make like I said, you know, once it's, it's a different, it's a different vibe, you know, when we all talking smack, you know, to each other behind, but then it's different when you got the crowd and then the event happened, and you sure. know, I feel like that just starts making everybody's energy high, you know what I'm saying? But you know, um, I feel like I feel like Trey came ready to fight, but it was still playing against his mental, maybe a little bit. Um, I feel like Armani came in with a strong mind. He was he was ready to fight. So Armani was ready from the get go. As soon as he walked in the building, he was like, "I'm ready." So it, it was all about that energy. Um, I feel like uh, I feel like uh, Armani Trey they came out in the first round banging. Um, I feel like uh, Trey had got frustrated a little bit when they first when they first uh, started in the first round, but he started pulling it off a little bit with throwing some jabs and connecting. But I feel like going towards more like the uh, Second and third round, Armani started out boxing, and, and Trey was still throwing his little things, whatever. But Armani started trying to put. Try, I was telling Armani to calm down. I was, I was like, hey, use your win because I know when Trey was in there, I was seeing that when Armani and Trey would start getting in that middle, when he started doing it, you know, Trey's a good inside fighter, and I didn't want, I didn't want Armani sitting up there wasting his win on trying to mix it up with an inside fighter. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, keep it to the outside. Keep out boxing him. You already got the first couple mm -hmm. rounds. You know what I'm saying? So what we need to do is just keep boxing and, and, and just take the belt home. So, you know, like I said, again, shout out to both of them. Hell, hell, hell of a fight, you know. Um, I, I, I really feel like, like I said again, I really feel like if, if, if Trey, if Trey would have came out a little bit more calm, mm -hmm. it, 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 it I, I could have seen that being a, being a light draw, but like I said, hats off to our mom for using the boxing mentality and knowing when to calm down and, 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 and use his opponent in the match to just go ahead and take the win. So like again, shout out to Trey and Armand. That, that, yeah, I heard it, gentlemen. That was a great analysis of the fight. Uh, great perspective. Um, but I, I wanna ask you something, man. Um, I know we talked about the heavyweight division, now we have a heavyweight champion. Is there some heavyweights that you see that you might, if you, if you could make a matchup, if you could make a matchup, is there one that you would put together? Maybe you want, you want the lead shots by a boxer lead. Man, I'm gonna tell you right now, I see a few heavyweights that I know for sure mm -hmm. that's gonna come for that bell and I know it's gonna be some issues, but there's a few heavyweights and I'm, it's uh, Mar, Big Marlin. Shout out to Marlo. Dan Francis. Shout out to Dan. And uh, I think them them is probably them is probably the only, I mean them is probably the only two heavyweights that I really see that like is going like really like sit up there and, and, and get that business and really and really try to come for that belt because I seen Dan's post the other day him working hard y'all better watch out for that boy Dan bro he been. That boy been in the cuts, staying quiet, and that, and that, and, he, and I and I like that because that's how my personality is. I don't, I don't talk much. I, I yeah. get quiet and I get in that training room and I go fucking nuts. But yeah, hey, guy. good good shit, man. I seen you. I see you working. Sniper mentality. Yeah. Lay low in the grass. He's yeah. hunting though. Don't yeah. make a mistake because you don't see him. Don't mean this gentleman. Don't see you. Um, before we before we sign off and 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 in, in this first inaugural first corner talk post fight interview. With Cam, Mr. Fox himself, I, I, I want to ask you: um, is, there, is there any, is there anyone outside of this league 
that you see training or you interested in inviting and get some work with you? Outside of the league, there's there's no one you would you wouldn't mind you know let's settle that here. Let's settle that. Let's that in the ring. And it could be no. Honestly, I was about to say I don't I don't have no problems everybody. Everybody everybody on the north side, you know I got love for everybody. So there ain't, ain't even no people that I really can say like oh I, I want to smoke with you. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. because anytime I'm out in the streets, whatever, and anytime anybody see me, it's all love. So like. I ain't got no smoke in nobody. Like, you want to smoke with Cam? You can get that smoke. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But I'm just like, you know, I ain't got no personal vendettas towards yes. anybody. Like I said, I feel like every there ain't no such thing as a shitty fighter. It's all about your learning, how fast mm -hmm. you're going to pick it up. You know, you could be shitty one week and be a great ass fighter the next week. True. I'm being honest, if, if anybody looked at my fights, when I first started with Papa Mike mm -hmm. to uh, Hayes Marley to mm -hmm. June Bug to um, sparring with Armani and Spar Wars, mm -hmm. I'm 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 coming, I'm coming, I'm getting better and better. I'm not letting off the gas. It's, and it's just going to get worse. I'm not I'm not I'm not letting up. Like every fight, I'm going I'm going to look at my videos. I'm gonna see what I did wrong, and I'm and I'm going to change it every single time. That that was kind of a big question, and I knew the gentleman would give that answer. But I, I, before I go and sign this off, I do want to say, uh, show this been a lot of appreciation. He put on for y'all, put on for the city, put on for his side. Cameron Fox, the man of Christ. Yes, sir. And the man of the ring. Yes, sir. Crush Thank you. Man. Point of talk.